millions of vulnerable Americans struggle to get reliable transportation to their medical appointments. That's why I started MedHall. City launched the Impact Fund to invest in both women and entrepreneurs of color like me so I can realize my vision and give everything I've got to my company and my community. I got you. For the love of people, for the love of community, for the love of progress, City. Hey there, and welcome everybody to the Paley Fest Fall TV preview. I'm Nichelle Turner of Entertainment Tonight and Secret Celebrity Renovation on CBS. And I am so excited to be here today. I really am. I got a call and said, you want to hang out with the CSI Vegas folks? And I didn't even have to think twice. I said yes. So I'm very honored to host and moderate this conversation, a very special conversation, celebrating CS, uh, CBS's CSI Vegas. I want to say, first of all, thank you to Haley Fest at their official card and their official sponsor, City, for helping make this event even possible for us to do. Uh, I'm really thrilled. I'm really thrilled to welcome the members of the series Gifted Cast and also the creative team behind this show. So please welcome with me cast members Georgia Fox, who is back. She is back. Sarah Seidel is back. We're very excited about this. Paula Newsom. Hello, Paula. Hey, Michelle. Maxine Robbie. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Very, very good. <laughs> Matt Loria, how are you? Good morning. What is a uh, good afternoon? Hello. <laughs> whatever it is, it, this is, honey, this is no time and space. <laughs> whatever you want it to be. Matt uh, plays Joshua Folsom on CSI Vegas. So welcome, welcome Matt. Uh, Mandeep Dillon, hello, Mandeep. There hello. You are. Hello, Hi. Ali, Ali Rajan, how are you? I'm great, thank you. So, <laughs> so good. And also, please welcome with this executive producer, Jerry Bruckheimer. Mr. Bruckheimer, how are you today? Great, great. Okay. Thanks for having me on this. Thanks for being here. Pleasure Jonathan Littman. Hello. How are you? Welcome. Great. Great to be here. So good. Anthony Zyker, how are you, sir? Very well, very well. 21 years in the making, we're still here. I listen, I love it. I, we're going to celebrate that 21 years today as well. And last but certainly not least, Mr. Tracy, Jason Tracy, how are you? Welcome. Hi, Michelle. Thanks for having us. Oh, thank you guys for being here. I'm really um, very excited about this because, you know, we all love the CSI franchise, but I do have to say before we get started, I'm going to give a little inside information to everybody watching because I'm here with the cast of CSI Vegas. Now, y'all know crime scene investigation, the smartest people figuring out the crimes and nobody here could figure out how to turn the do not disturb on, mm -mm. <laughs> mm -mm. <laughs> on the computer. Mm -mm. <laughs> mm -mm. <laughs> well, I'm just saying, I'm just saying. <laughs> just the first 10 episodes, Nichelle, we're all, you know, insane here. Yeah, I just finished. I know how to tie my shoelaces now, so that's... There you go. Listen, I still that's new territory. the bunny ears, Matt. Don't feel bad. I still use the bunny ears, and I'm 46 years old. Don't Come on now. <laughs> Don't feel bad. So, uh, Mr. Zyker, I'm going to start with you, if I may. Sure. Because you created this phenomenon. You created CSI, just like you said, 21 years ago it premiered. This show went on to be a global phenomenon, running for 15 seasons, three spinoffs, record-breaking ratings, domestically, you even set a world record, which is wild. Um, for Dude. people who don't know the story of CSI, how did you come up with this concept? Well, it all comes down to watching a show on Discovery Channel called The New Detectives. That's where the, the germ of the idea began. It was Linda Sobeck, the Raider cheerleader who was killed by the photographer. They pulled a long blonde hair follicle out of the headrest of the passenger seat. At the end of the follicle was a tag cell or a seed. So when hair's yanked out, uh, it has a seed attached. And I was like, wow, all that information just on one single hair follicle? And I really realized early in what I would say the year 1999, uh, that the body is the perfect specimen for crime solving because it could speak to you when it can't speak for itself. Went in to see uh, Jonathan Lippman and, and Jerry Bruckheimer had a bunch of green index cards, had the idea written down. We uh, were the last pitch in October to Nina Tassler. She said yes, ended up Friday at nine o'clock in the year 2000, October 6th. And here 21 uh, years later on October 6th of this year, now we're on our, our fifth iteration, CSI Vegas, courtesy of Mr. Jason Tracy. That is so fantastic. Now, um, Anthony, you mentioned Jonathan in there. So Jonathan, to you, like what, how did these conversations even start to bring it back? 
it it started it started with the we were on the cusp of the 20th anniversary coming up and we were having some conversation with CBS, but it, there was kind of a desire for a hook. And it was kind of at the time of, you know, alternate facts and, you know, th th these phrases that were coming in, science deniers. And we, the feeling became, well, we were the show that said science is a fact. You can prove a crime with science isn't it the perfect time to bring the show back? And that kind of became the click. It was really you know, kind of around the 20th anniversary. And we started the conversations early in 2019. Jerry, I mean, that's fascinating to me. I just had a little bit of a light bulb moment. That's why there was just a bit of a delay. Uh, Jerry, is that it? Is it like, you know, we're in this time and space where people are starting to question science. So this is the perfect time to bring this back. Is it as simple as that? Well, I think it's more than that. It's it's the fans, uh, the fans, and you know, Anthony created such a, a a great concept and a great show. And mm -hmm. just you know, thinking back when he walked in the office, uh, uh, he's he's thinner and better looking now, but uh, <laughs> and better dressed than when he first walked in. But you know, the fans love this show. It's yeah. a, it's a hit all around the world, and we have new hooks into it now. And thanks to Jason who came in and and gave us a new hook along with working with Anthony on how to how to bring this back to the public. You know, they, they're consuming all the old episodes like crazy. So the fans yeah. want to see new episodes and we're going to give it to them. Well, Jason, you seem to be getting your flowers today. So I'm going to keep giving mm -hmm. them to you because you are the showrunner, of course, for CSI Vegas. Um, and it's set in the original location of Las Vegas, which I think is so cool. We've got some familiar characters. Of course, George is here with us today. William Peterson, we're geeked about that. Um, but we've got some new faces. And so how is, is this new CSI Vegas going to bridge with the original CSI crime scene investigation? Well, the, the original had such a great ending that Anthony wrote where a couple of our heroes were sailing off in sunset, Grissom and Sarah, and we had to get them back off the boat, which is sort of a tall order for a storyteller. Um, so this new chapter opens with a big, grabby, dangerous attack on another beloved character and on the lab itself. So our pilot kind of opens up a mystery that's going to play out and fits and starts mixed in with our cases of the week all season long. Um, but the franchise that Anthony created still works beautifully. We've updated it. You know, we've got new characters, new toys, new sets, and a few new storytelling tools as filmmakers, but you know, uh, we're gonna go home with our characters a little bit more. I think it's gonna feel like a fresh new show, but we're gonna deliver everything that the CSI viewers love so much about the giganto success of the original run. So if the alien life form of me, who's been living on Mars from 2000 to 2015 came down now, I wouldn't need an explanation. I could just jump right into the new iteration. I wouldn't like, I'd be okay just jumping into this. Whether you're an alien or Amish or on Rumspringa and it's your first time with TV, I think you can absolutely jump right in. Uh, no, no homework needed. Now, Georgia, um, Jason just kind of brought it up. So I'm going to go there because Sarah's back and we're glad. We are very, very glad that Sarah's back. But the last time we saw her, she was sailing off with Grissom, sailing on off into the sunset. So, I mean... How did she come back? Why did she come back to Vegas? Well, and, and it was it was such an amazing ending, an te amazing television ending. To me, you know, TV rarely gets endings at mm. all. And so it was pretty epic. And and I was, you know, I wasn't sure I wanted to come back. I was like, wait a minute, they're going to leave Paradise? Why, yeah. why would they do that? But um, uh, Jason crafted it really beautifully. Sarah gets a call from a very dear old friend that's in trouble and asks her to come mm. help. Uh, I think this character will also be a, a dear friend of the audiences. And that sort of creates the pathway for her to return. Is Grissom coming with her? Yes. <laughs> Are they still married? Everything. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I like, I like, I like this very much. Anthony, you know, like just hearing kind of Georgia talk about Sarah and bringing her back, it is very nostalgic. And so you've got her, you've got William, um, coming back as well. Are we going to see, well, she just kind of gave us a yes, but are we going to see some more familiar faces scattered here and there or, you know, back for the full Monty? Uh, I will say uh, you'll probably see a face or two. 
uh, beyond okay. what was discussed. We want to keep it, you know, mysterious. I will tell you that the most real moment I've ever had in my career is being, uh, you know, in, in Jerry Bruckheimer's area across the street from his office and having to write the words uh, end of end of uh, series, not end of show. That was that was quite a moment. I remember getting up and walking around the block in Santa Monica and going, wow, it's finally over. So we're so thankful it's back and we've got a, a great showrunner to really bring us into the next millennium, millennium of CSI with Jason. So we're just very happy and very fortunate. But Georgia said yes, Billy said yes, and blank and blank also said yes. That's all I'll say. I mean, ain't this business <laughs> something? You go through all the therapy when you think see the series is over, you go through the mourning process, you do all that, you finally get right, and then you are back again. For some of us, it never ended. <laughs> yeah, for some of you, you're right. For some of you guys, it certainly, um, it certainly never ended. Jason, um, you know, we've seen the the, the well known characters from the original CSI kind of move on from their crime solving careers and, and doing other things, but the bureau in Vegas continued right it, with the new team in place. So I introduced everybody at the top, but tell us about this new team. Absolutely. Yeah, there's some new faces, a lot of turnover in the years since the, the series went off the air and starting with Paula Newsom playing Max Roby, who's our new head of the lab. She comes from Chicago from a genetics background, which is definitely a field that's evolved a lot in the last five or six years. So it makes perfect sense that somebody with that skill set kind of leading things. Uh, we also have um, Matt Loria playing Josh Folsom. He's kind of a, a, a crime scene reconstruction specialist, uh, obviously um, a, a veteran being of advanced age. He had a birthday yesterday, so I'm not sure <laughs> quite how up there he is. Uh, he, he's more, one of our more veteran new characters. Hey. Um, we've got Mandeep playing Ali, <laughs> and she's uh, just a little bit younger than Matt and a little bit younger than Folsom, uh, but a, a, a CSI level two coming up in the world. Uh, and we also have uh, Mel Rodriguez playing Dr. Hugo Ramirez down in the morgue, uh, which is a lot of fun, and, along with a few other lab techs. They're going to be some new faces for us. Well, let's talk to the new kids on the block then, mm -hmm. uh, right right now. And so Paula, Matt, and um, Mandeep, I, I, this kind of goes to all of you guys. Paula, I'll have you answer it first. Um, you, as an actor, you get a call that you get a, a, a gig, and you're, you're geeked about that. But when mm -hmm. you get the call that you're joining the CSI franchise, what is that one like? Ain't no words. <laughs> Ain't no words. Yeah. I'm coming out of Pilates. I'm coming out of Pilates. I get a call and I'm like, what? <laughs> I mean, truly, there are there are no words. I mean, yeah. this 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 thing that we're now part of that we're so great that I'm so grateful and I know my castmates are so grateful to be part of. It's just epic, mm -hmm. you know. And to just get an invitation to be part of it is Ain't no words. Yeah, Matt, <laughs> you have any words? <laughs> uh, I mean, when I found it, no. I mean, I, I think Paul su uh, summed it up. You know, it's I was on top of the world. I, I, was, in, I was in my backyard when I found out. I, I wish I could have come up with something cool. Like I was in Waiters in the Florida Keys <laughs> researching a crime scene. And I was like, <laughs> this will be easy. It's right up my alley. Um, I was in the backyard doing something during quarantine. We had a friend over who um, is like is like family to us. And so we were doing an outdoor hang and I got the call and my wife and her stood next to each other with their like jaws open because they knew it was good news. They didn't know what it was. And then I told them and we all flipped out together. But then I found out that this very dear friend of ours has watched every single episode since oh. the very, very beginning, owns the DVDs. Oh, that's and so the she was thrilled for me but she was also a little like you know off balance <laughs> so that phone call you might have to hit decline on that phone call for a while she's going <laughs> every piece she's of blocked. information no she's done she's not <laughs> she's family anymore off the info right no I, I've, uh, i'm moving up i love it Mandy, how about you yeah i was so happy um i remember i was dancing to beyonce as you do Ooh. and i remember the first time i put jeans on that year because obviously it's lockdown. So I've, I've been in gym gear for the whole whole of lockdown, right? So first I was feeling myself. I was like, oh yeah, I feel fancy. I put some jeans on, I was listening to Beyonce and I got the call on <laughs> my team. And I was like, what? Yeah. And then I um, went and had a McDonald's to celebrate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm really, I'm really grateful to be part of it and I'm having a great time. 
I get, listen, there ain't nothing like dancing to Beyonce and getting a win. That's a perfect day. Oh, no. Definitely a perfect day. Uh, Paula, so I introduced <laughs> yeah. you as Maxine, but Jason called you Max. Yes. So, and then it makes me think like, who is Max? What kind of, what? What kind of character is she? Mm. And do we call her Max on the show? We call her Max. Don't okay. nobody call her Maxine yet. I imagine okay. her mama rolled through, so you're gonna call her Maxine. <laughs> um, but Max, what I love about She's Max- She's the leader, right? She's the leader of this, yes. of this squad. Okay. She was lucky enough that Sarah passed down uh, the job to lead to CSI and Maxine took it uh, years ago, a couple of years back. And uh, Maxine, how I would describe Maxine or Max is she's, she's measured. She's, uh, she's intelligent, she's fun, there's a thing. Um, and she's not to be oomphed with. Ooh, you better be <laughs> fully realized, come on. I come love on it. <laughs> I love yeah. it. Yeah. Mandy, what about Allie? Who is Allie? Allie is, um, so she's level two CSI. She's really fun, she's really smart like so smart um <laughs> good at her job like she really is good at her job she is originally from india so you know she's really brave i think she's she's in vegas no family um and has kind of set up her her own life there and i think that takes um a lot of courage i admire her you know so yeah but she's dope <laughs> i love it i love it and matt what about josh are we Josh is a guy, he's, he's, a, he's a level three CSI, sort of a lead investigator on a lot of the cases. Mm -hmm. And as Jason mentioned earlier, just sort of a, a recon, has, a, has this incredible aptitude for reconstruction and sort of processing how things might, might have happened. Josh is an interesting character, born and raised in Vegas, amongst and from a bunch of crooks. And so it's mm -hmm. interesting that he's found his way into this, you know, early on, the first thing I learned about the characters is he's this guy who feels as though he's, by what he's doing, he's repaying some of this messy karmic debt that was, you know, in, you know, develop, you know, put in the bank by his, his family. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I think a really central thing to who Josh is, is this, this idea, this potential for change. There's a sort of nature nurture conversation that happens throughout the this, this season. And Josh is in the camp of like, no matter who you are, where you come from, there's always this possibility that you can make something different of yourself or be more than maybe what you even saw of yourself and certainly the people around you from a very early age. And then I, I, what's interesting about that is this tension that being in this job in Las Vegas and seeing the worst of the worst, Josh is continually running into the people he possibly could have been, but for one slight change in his trajectory somewhere along the line. And I think it's, an, a, it's a daily practice for Josh of self-mastery and doing his best. He mm -hmm. adores the women he works with. He's obsessed with these two women. And now he's getting to know also this legend in Sarah, who he knows by reputation. Well, okay, can I, I'm not in the business of, of giving people credit for things they, they should do, you know, as Chris Rock says, but I do have <laughs> to take a minute to say that this feels really yummy to me. Like mm. seeing these fully realized women, mm -hmm. these very smart women, these very smart people of color, mm -hmm. talking about STEM and science and mm -hmm. all of this, this feels very good to me. So thank you guys for this. Amen, really. Amen, amen. Amen. You know, amen. you know, you know. And speaking of characters, I mean, Las Vegas is a character in itself. So being set back in the original place, I think is really great because Jason, that gives you like a wide variety to have any and every sort of crime, anything goes down because we know anything that happens, you know, in Vegas. So number one, can you talk about this like threat to the crime lab? Because it does, Vegas has a very, you know, storied arc this season. So can you tell me about this threat to the crime lab? Yeah, a little bit. Um, I, you know, it, it plays out in the, the city where Anthony planted the original, you know, Vegas has got an energy all its own. And I think that, you know, this was sort of the core of the franchise that went on to multiple iterations, but this thing is kind of like, you know, the mothership. And, and so part of my original pitch to Jonathan and J to Jerry was uh, to come in and, uh, and make the lab's reputation at stake. And that that was one of the things that could drive us through the season and create the leverage to bring this thing back. I don't want to give away too much, but the threat is sort of both real and specific and also kind of existential. There's this question 
uh, hanging over the season about the validity of science, about the work that they do at CSI, which is obviously timely, like we talked about. Mm -hmm. um, and I think, you know, just the rise of social media, mass media, people aren't wired to ingest everything that gets thrown at us and they gravitate to stories. And this season we're invited to ride along with Grissom and Sarah and their new friends as they sort of pick apart a conspiracy. They're fighting this narrative that CSI, CSI might not have uh, kind of lived up to evidentiary standards. Maybe all the cases you saw them crack over the last 15, 16 years uh, wasn't done quite right. And so the only way to get to the bottom of it and protect their reputation and kind of the validity of all those convictions that you ever saw was is sort of to fi find the truth, to follow the truth, to follow the science. Anthony, why is Vegas such an amazing setting? <clears throat> well, Las Vegas is interesting for a background for a, a crime show and a science show because it's a 24-hour town. So we set the show October 6th of 2000 in the graveyard shift. So in, in one stretch of the imagination, you're at a crime scene, you know, looking at dead bodies and you're having a lobster biscuit four in the morning at Caesar's Palace. <laughs> and that was, that was always what it was. We would hover How over- How did you know what I did at 4 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> last time I was in Vegas? <laughs> we, would, we would go over to Las Vegas Strip and we'd, we'd, go, we'd go camera right or camera left and you're somewhere in, in Las Vegas and just the speed, the tone, the pace, the glitz, the glamour, yeah. the stimulation of, of what that franchise represents in Vegas as a character was the perfect backdrop for, for, for a crime show. Okay, to the cast, Georgia, Paula, Mandeep, and Matt, y'all not getting away with, without answering this question. I know you have a crazy Vegas story. I know all of you have to. I mean, <laughs> you haven't lived if you haven't had one night in Vegas. So spill it. Okay, I, I have one. I, I have so okay. many. Are you okay, going? Go all all right, bye, I don't know where to begin. Crazy Vegas <laughs> stories, really. If, after 15 years of going to Vegas, I was like, well, that one or that one or that one or that one. <laughs> and one uh, I guess today is, I think it was around 2007 or eight or five. Danny Cannon was a, you know, he, he had done the pilot. We were in Vegas. It was July. We, we usually would go to Las Vegas right when the season would start. It was a really, really, really warm time of the year to go to Vegas and mm -hmm. shoot. And we were out in the desert and it was upwards of 115, 16 degrees. We were shooting there in the middle of the day. And all of a sudden this massive dust storm just blew in and everybody had to run for cover. Uh, they got a lot of people, as many people as they could, to trailers and trucks. I think we, you know, we, it suddenly looked like, I mean, we had bandanas on and face gear and people hiding under wheels of cars. <laughs> and, and we shut down for over an hour. And I never had experienced anything like that. Like you couldn't see two feet in front of you. Wow. But I was really glad because it was so hot. <laughs> I was like, I, at least I can go to my trailer for an hour and hide out this, uh, this dust storm. That's my story. All right, Paula. Okay. So uh -oh. I don't go to Vegas a lot, right, right, right. And <laughs> why is it that in Las Vegas, people always got to be wearing like different degrees of clothing? Mm -hmm. The people that you wonder, you're like, why don't you have some more clothes on, right? <laughs> pretty much. So, <laughs> pretty much, right? And there was this one woman <laughs> on Fremont Street. It was a picture of her. She was inside a painted circle. Mm -hmm. inside a painted circle with a cell phone pasties and a and a and a thong oh nice okay that's it <laughs> and i'm talking like on the phone. but i mean see talking on the phone but i mean the thing is i'm thinking is does she think the circle is going to protect her from anybody <laughs> bumping into her or, that's what you she know thought. what i mean Paula, that's what yes. she thought. but that's you know what, what? nobody did it nobody did it i was just walking around taking pictures of her <laughs> that actually Something may have been me at four o'clock in the morning in Vegas. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that, anybody? You guys got one? This was well, my first time first. ever going in Vegas. No. Yeah, really? I've never been to Vegas before. This is my, we went, we went, we shot out there for, or we went there for a week, I think it was a week. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it was my first time um, going to Vegas for this Did show. Did your head explode at all? You know, I found it fascinating. It's yeah. a fascinating place. It is. And I didn't, I am, I was a granny, like literally I'd film and then I'd go back and I'd have like a lovely evening and a meal by myself. I didn't do Vegas. I didn't do what I should have done. And I think if I go back, I just need VIP everything. Yeah. You got to so have I'm one, you have to have one night where you just say, wild. that didn't happen. 
I yeah. don't know who you talking about. Oh. That was my twin. Like you have to have oh. people. <laughs> right, Matt? <laughs> you have to have one of those. <laughs> yeah. Uh oh. Well, <laughs> buckle oh, up. And these have been kind of PG, <laughs> so I'm just going to hit you guys with the truth. Oh my God. <laughs> about what, what really happened in Vegas. When we were there, this is while we were filming. Mm -hmm. season's almost over so I don't mind saying this mm -hmm. but amid filming I went out by myself <laughs> as men do yes and I found out that there were vegan options at White Castle now <laughs> That's I, went to, I went to <laughs> three <laughs> I went to three or four different White Castles that night and Mandeep can vouch for this and I hit them all up because they all have different varieties and I, I probably got, I don't know, a couple dozen of those tasty little vegan. I was just in my little rental car by myself, mm. smashing. And I picked up Mandeep the next morning for brunch and uh, the car smelled like White Castle. And if that's not crazy, that's, that I don't is know crazy. what is. I did that have is. like one, I did have like Mandeep, I did have like the one big fat VIP whatever because I was working with a guy who's a gigantic, gigantic superstar, superstar, blah, 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 blah. And it's his brother who's also a superstar. His birthday is the same as mine, which is actually tomorrow, the 15th, Wikipedia. Mm. I get text messages on my wrong birthday every year. <laughs> but, um, but anyway, we had like the thing and my wife and I like halfway, it's probably like 1030, like the night is young and the, the, the stretched Hummer is full of people partying, having an amazing time. My wife and I are in the very, very back like this leaning against each other <laughs> trying to stay awake oh and we're like, my god oh. and then we got to like this like penthouse suite that everyone was partying in, and we're like crawling around like zombies trying to find where the espresso machine is inside the hotel room and that was like our crazy vegas story i love it i love it well here's the here's a kicker for you matt i have never had white castle me yeah. neither that's crazy i might be the feds see thank you so much for the, the interview Take care. <laughs> hey, Jonathan, you know, there is such thing. And I know you guys have heard this. Um, there's such thing as the CSI effect, right? Right. So, right. so tell me a little bit about, can you even explain what the CSI effect is? The CSI effect, you know, you, we were joked that we were doing the show that we were helping criminals get away with crimes. What we didn't realize was we were actually having an effect on juries. And the CSI effect is a problem where juries have an expectation of the prosecutors needing to bring in more yeah. to convict a criminal. And the first time I heard about it was in 2002 when a prosecutor berated me in the hallway of the Santa Monica courthouse after I just finished doing jury duty and he found out what I was working on. Um, but in 2004, I think it was like USA Today or World U U.S. News and World Report had a big story called the CSI effect. And it's spurred over the years now jury instructions that say you can't expect what you see on TV to be in real life. So we, uh, we educated an audience. We maybe overeducated an audience a little bit. But um, for a time, it was really having an effect on what was going on in courtrooms across America. Oh, we all think we can solve crimes now. You know that, right? We all think Well, that I we know are. we can. <laughs> <You> know, <laughs> we all do. <laughs> I do have a question from City. Our sponsor uh, uh, sent in a question, um, and it's a really great one. And I kind of want to put it to Anthony and Jerry, either one of you guys, because this franchise has been such a success for so long. Um, and now you're bringing this, this new um, iteration in, in CSI Vegas. But how do you still keep that core? Because you, because that audience, you know, the CSI audience is loyal and they love it. How do you like bridge the gap and keep that core of what is what is old, or not not so much old, but what is storied, and bring that to like the new and the fresh? Go ahead, Jerry. Well, you know, I think by the fact that we have Billy and Georgia back uh, tells you a lot about the show. Uh, and introducing these the new characters who are going to become the staples in your living room for the future because they are their characterizations and how they solve crimes and in, in the new technology are even more exciting than we had in the past. So we're going to bring a whole new audience plus all of our old fans back. The creatures of habit like me will be okay. <laughs> when I find something I like, I like it. I don't want to, you know, so good. You were right. a big fan of the show, Michelle? 
I listen, I told you, I think I can solve crimes. <laughs> I, I honestly think I can solve crimes. I think I'm good like that. Um, you know, to the to the actors, um, I know you guys are great actors, but you also have to deal with a lot of really dark, wild subject matter. So is there something that you do at the end of the day, Georgia, you've been in this, you know, for for the longest in this, this franchise. Is there something that you do like a ritual at the end of the day to kind of shake that mess off like when it's a particularly wild day? Oh, I like to dance it out. Yeah. I think I'm not alone with <laughs> yeah. some of the cast. Like they, nothing really feels better than that. <laughs> Um, if it's not three in the morning, I might call a friend. Uh, mm. And I love to watch comedies and I love romantic comedies. And that definitely can change the gear in my brain. I needed to do that. You know what? I just watched Something's Gotta Give last night because I needed a romantic comedy. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, Nancy Myers movie, stat, boom. <laughs> Here we go. Mm -hmm. What about you? What about the rest of you guys? Is there something? Well, I know, man, deep you dance to Beyonce. So I, I dance to Beyonce. And also, because um, we we drive to to and from work the drive yeah. is so helpful um but also me and matt normally call each other on our drive home and we have like our little debrief and we just we'll just chat rubbish and it's really like great it. because you can just switch off and switch your brain off now, is it pilates for you paula is that what does it <laughs> it's it's pilates, but also i make sure and get away you know, like being here with some friends in Lake Arrowhead, I spend time with family. I make sure and spend time just to make sure, just to get back to, and you know, as you were asking that, I was thinking about what our, our TA, technical advisor, Daniel Holstein, who's uh, AZ, Anthony says that he's like the real life Grissom, is he talks about how many women there are in that work at the crime lab. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And he says, it's like, it's over 50%. Am I right, Anthony? It's like a huge amount. And when you think of like women being, you know, having a larger corpus callosum and being able to multitask, mm -hmm. you know, but, but just think, and he talked about the empathy, being able to empathize, to get to the end of the story, to find out what happened, who did what, who hurt this person, who, you know? And he also talked about how the careers are last like sometimes 10 years mm -hmm. because that is a lot for the nervous system to be able yeah. to see a lot of the stuff that they see and a lot of stuff that they witness so yeah my way one way of dealing with it is is getting away mm -hmm. and michelle then also the evolution of the crime lab demographically and gender wise has changed a lot in 20 years yeah. i think why i'm the most proud of the franchise in this iteration right now is because where we are today as Americans and where we are in America is representative finally in, a, in where our show is today, mm -hmm. to diversity, to gender, to intelligence, to roles. Uh, these kind of things are very important. Look, we're built on one thing, on the worst day of your life, CSIs come in, provide a peace of mind and closure by solving the crime and bringing peace of mind to the survivor. That's it. That is a recipe that, that translates in every language around the world. That's exactly what CSI is 20 years ago and what CSI is today. Speaking of language and lingo, um, this, this you know, franchise has a very specific type of lingo. So I'm, I want to ask the newbies, Paula, Mandy, hmm. and Matt, who had the hardest time with the lingo? <laughs> you, have to, you have to go to Matt for this, just only purely because of this last week, you have to go to Matt for this. <laughs> What's the word, Matt? Yeah, I was, uh, what was that word? I was oh, hoping you would God. ask, uh, Michelle, I was hoping you would ask about phagocytosing leukocytes. Um, <laughs> there's, there, apparently, I haven't seen it yet, but apparently there's a, we, were, we had an hour and a half left at the end of a long day to rip off like a, a two and a half page scene. It's an uh -huh. interrogation scene and I'm like, I'm like mad dog in this like doc, this individual who <laughs> we're interviewing who may or may not be guilty. But um, anyway, so I'm interviewing this guy and I'm like, so as her doctor, uh, can you tell us why her blood was full of fat? Uh, so as her doctor, <laughs> can you tell us why her blood was so full of, uh, of I, I got it, 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 I got it. I got it. <laughs> Went on for three and a half minutes and it's Fagus said, I don't know. I don't know what it is. I don't care. Season two. <laughs> it's, in the, it's in three episodes of season two. 
<laughs> Georgia, did okay. you have to give, did you, did you step in at any time before and say, listen, there's going to be some lingo days. There's going to be some of those days, like just give advice to, to the, the folks that were coming on. I probably give way too much advice to everyone on a daily no, basis. It's not. I, like I, I put my foot in my mouth all the time. But yeah, I think um, it is one of the biggest challenges of the show. Like, one of the best advantages of the show is that the scenes tend to be sort of short and fast. Mm -hmm. So you might have this uh, just like insane amount of science dialogue that you're not sure you're gonna get through, but you only have to do it for half a page, which is great. And um, one of the things that's really helped me is if you have a science scene that's got a lot of dialogue and a lot of science, to look at it sort of like you're gonna do, you're learning a dance number. Yep. You start a couple hours early, that's and it's smart. like choreography. And so, you know, by the time you get to shooting it, you kind of, you've got your steps down a little bit. Otherwise it's like, forget it. It's just like, mm -hmm. well, I don't just shoot my face and then shoot my hands. Don't put them in the same frame. <laughs> and don't do it <laughs> Cause that's just, that's just, that could take hours. That's smart. Like learn it like a dance step or learn it like a song like that. Cause that in my head, you know, yeah even though I still mess up song, words to songs and think it's one thing and it's not. But, but that's like, that, that's actually really smart. Okay, I wanna ask everybody, um, because you guys, I don't know, even if you guys weren't fans of the franchise before to the, to the new folks, like I know you had to get immersed in it, you know, when, when getting this job. So does everyone here have a favorite episode of the original mm. franchise and what is it? I'm gonna start with Jason. I'm gonna take Blood Drops, which was an episode in season one that uh, I think Dakota Fanning, it may have been her first time on screen, uh, but it was just incredible to watch an entire murder uh, unfold based on blood spatter evidence and the speed and the cinematic storytelling that, uh, I think that may have been episode six, right, Anthony? Something, somewhere Seven. early Seven. in the run. Seven. Ken Frank. Is that Ken right, Frank. Seven? Yeah, um, just that was just a special episode that uh, I, I recommend highly. Love that. Jonathan? Uh, Jason Stole My Thunder. Uh, <laughs> it, it, has, it has always been, ble okay, always been blood, blood drops. drops for me, but for, for a very different reason. It was the seventh episode of the show, and it was the episode where it all came together. Hmm. Every single piece of the show <laughs> fell right into place, and the forensics and the characters and the storytelling and our effects. And we looked at it and we just had that moment, all of us collectively going, there it is, there's mm. our show. And it was, and it is still to say, I can watch that episode over and over again. It's so intense. Um, yeah. And Anthony. Well, still my thunder again, both of you guys. Oh my uh, gosh. I, will, I will say for the record, uh, I'm gonna just go, I'm gonna go uh, gold, silver, bronze. Gold for sure, grave danger, Quentin Tarantino, two hour finale, season five, yeah. 80 million viewers. Uh, Ellie, the first time we went number one in the country, uh, that was an awesome moment for all of us. And of course, sentimentally, immortality, the finale of the season, two-parter, uh, was just a wonderful moment. You, like that sound you just heard was network executives everywhere screaming, Ellie, 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 I feel like I need to see more before I can say, because now I, I want to revisit the ones that Anthony just mentioned. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, do you have an you episode know, this season that you've shot so far that you're like, I, this is, mm, yeah. I'll say this, I'll say, you know, gosh, every new script that I've read this season, mm -hmm. I've been shocked by the case that we're solving. I'm like, we're now we find ourselves in a what? Wait, we just met a who? Like, it just, Every new week is a wonderful surprise and it's delighting. I think, you know, we've got, Mandeep and I have some really weird, funny, bizarre stuff that we get ourselves into in episode six, which is a whole bundle, bundle of fun. So I look forward to checking that out. Okay. You know, I did, I had the privilege of doing three episodes of CSI in the original series back in 2011 or 12. I think it might've aired in 2012. And it was Mark Helgenberger's last three episodes. And I had the privilege of working with Georgia back then and, and so cool. wonderful original cast members. So that was a special experience for me, especially given um, the journey that I'm on now. I never would have imagined mm -hmm. that this would have come to be. But I, I can say about that experience, and I shared this with Georgia, I had some of the most fun I have mm -hmm. ever had on any set anywhere when I did those three episodes. And it, it kind of was a, an important moment for me as an artist where 
I had done some really interesting projects. It was the, the beginning of my career and I was very much getting my sea legs. And I felt like in many ways, it kind of came together on that set. And I think it was due in large part to how well, how well oiled the machine was, how kind everybody was, how welcoming. And I was really able to find my place as an artist. But listen, Matt, I'm not going to get on a soapbox, but I don't believe in coincidences, sir. So Me however that happened then, it was preordained. Come back around and happen for you now. So Amen. I understand. Mandy, Amen. I want to come to you. Favorite episode or this season that you, that you say to me, you have to see this episode. You cannot miss this one. Okay, so I... I'm going to go with Matt and say episode six of this new season. I've, I've not ever watched any CSI in my life. And I, and I hadn't before I, and I still haven't. And I made, when I got the role, I made that conscious decision where I'm like, nope, I'm going in fresh. I'm not even going to go there. Okay. Um, which has been, which has been great. And also back to your earlier thing, if an alien was living under a rock for 15 years, I can just vouch and say, yeah, you will understand it. And you can just jump right in because I've read these scripts with fresh eyes and I'm hooked already. Cool. So I would say episode six is really fun. Um, and I guess when it comes to like characters and stuff from the original, I've, I've, I can only go by our two main, you know, Georgia and, and um, Sarah, Sarah Seidel and, and Gil. And I, I really like Sarah Seidel. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think she's really cool. We like her too. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, well, wait, I, how about you? Can I, can I, can oh, I yeah, interrupt like how amazing uh, Georgia is too, by the way? She, you know, as far as the science goes and everything, she had, the first scene I shot was in a store in a very hot, condensed, small space. Mm -hmm. And it was just like science, 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 and props, props, props. <laughs> and Georgia was so encouraging and comforting and really set a marvelous tone about how to stick it and land it and be a pro. But she did it with such grace and such encouragement and has really, you know, been there for us. I yeah. love that. I like hearing that. I really do. Mr. Bruckheimer, how about you? Favorite of well, all time? Well, it has to come down to the first episode ever mm -hmm. where uh, mm -hmm. that really send shockwaves through television and through the country and the world eventually. Uh, the brilliance of the writing, the casting, the directing, uh, everything about it. Uh, CBS coming in and doing great promotion behind the show as they saw it was going to start to rise. And, you know, it was on a Friday night and that's the kind of the graveyard of television. And all of a sudden, uh, this show started taking off on a Friday night. and. And, CBS, and now CBS uh, is dominant. Yeah, Friday night. Brilliantly CBS moved it to night. Thursday, which is the the biggest night of television. And then it then it really took off. But that first episode woke the eyes of the audiences and the community and television and creativity. Everything that it melded into one into this one episode. Well, us folks at Secret Celebrity Renovation appreciate y'all helping make Friday night a good night for CBS. <laughs> <laughs> we very much appreciate that. Um, Ms. Paula, I'm gonna come to you. What do you, what say you? I gotta say, goodness, right, blood drops. Mm -hmm. It was just watching Dakota Fanning, you know, and the impact on this little girl, you know, and that watching how that story rippled through. But also, if I had to do a close second, it would be put Anthony's first one, is that one that Quentin Tarantino, where brother was in the box with the ants on him. Yeah. That was not right. <laughs> that was not right. That was not okay. I Were was you like, yelling that at the TV? That no, right. was. I was right. like, they, don't, they don't pay him enough to do that stuff. <laughs> in the show, the footage. <laughs> The funny story is, I would tell, I would tell Quentin, I'm like, so when you release the ants, oh. and you and you yell cut, like, what happens? The ants right. go back to one, or what's the story? Go back to one, <laughs> and they vacuum. I know, I'm ants. itching just think about it. So the protocol is they vacuum the ants. That ain't right. And then they put them back into rotation. And that if ain't you, right. If you uh, are one ounce shy of ants that deceased, they actually charge you a fine. That so right. we had at least the ants zip them back up, put them back out. It was super cool. And there's an yeah, NAD no with ants a... were harmed in the making of that no, episode. No ants were harmed. And there's an NAD with headphones going, remember where you went. Remember where you went. <laughs> 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 well, Miss uh, Georgia, I have to I, I have to come to you next. I wanted to save like save you for last because you, you know, you really are um 
the gold standard on of, on this team. And so you have a favorite episode? Well, thank you, Michelle. Thank you so much for saying that. First, I want to give a shout out to episode six of, of this year. Jason, what's the title of that episode? Funhouse. 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 So okay. Funhouse, look for it, everybody. I think I'm going to go a little bit obscure and there's, it's really an impossible question for me to answer every episode, you know, has, has a, is in my DNA somewhere. And, um, and I'm grateful for those stories. I love the space oddity, uh, which is kind of a, a Star Trek spoof that we did many years ago. Yep. Um, Girls Gone Wild and Girls Gone Wilder, which were later in the season that had a really ga- great uh, story for Elizabeth Shue and Liz Arnois, myself. And of course, Mr. Zyker, my all-time favorite, there, it has to be is Immortality, uh, which is the series finale that we did in 2015. I wondered if anyone was going to say that. Oh. <laughs> wow. Anthony, but, but you know, there's one, the one that was not mentioned that is the Georgia Fox gem of all gems. Oh, that was 16 amazing. days of rewriting and yeah. meticulous storytelling is, is her awesome episode called Butterfly. Mm. Oh. Is that the oh, one where she's right. in the he desert? That's where she has the doppelganger lookalike. It's awesome. Oh. Butterfly. Yeah. Okay, there you go. I love that. So now we have like so much that we can go back because I'm about to go back and watch Blood Drop today. Oh, for sure. <laughs> today. So we have, you know, these, these um, episodes we can go back and binge on before we get the new season uh, of CSI Vegas, which by the way, premieres October 6th on CBS. It's also gonna stream live and on demand on the CBS app, Paramount Plus. So you can watch it anywhere. You can get it anywhere. And I'm I'm very excited about this. I was geeked anyway coming into this, but now sitting with you all and talking to you all uh, for this last, you know, about 40 minutes, I, I'm just, I'm so hyped. And welcome back, Georgia. Welcome, Paula, Mandeep, and Matt. Uh, and, and thank you, fellas. For bringing us back around and then introducing us to uh, CSI once again, I, I really appreciate it. and I appreciate you guys all for being here today, taking a little bit of your Saturday to hang out. Oh, thank, well, you. thank you, thank you, pleasure. Thank you. Of course, so thank everyone also for watching and for joining us for this special Paley Fest Fall TV preview with conversation with the members of the wonderful show CSI Vegas. Uh, and thanks to Paley Fest's official sponsor, official card, City. You can learn more about Paley Fest. Uh, about, excuse me, you can learn more about the Paley Center by visiting paleycenter.org. Thank you everybody so much and please take care and take care of yourselves.